Hey everybody, what's going on? I am Greg Sussman, joined today by Jim Sonis of FanDuel. Spring training has begun, so let's talk a little baseball. What's going on, Jim? Yeah, it's been a while since we talked baseball here on the show, so we're bringing it back, uh, having some thoughts of warmer weather and not absurd like once in a century type storms. So let's have, have some good warm thoughts here and talk some baseball for sure. Absolutely. I can proudly do that from the state of Florida. So let's let's get into it. We begin with the NLEs. We're going over some of the division winners and the best that you like here this week. And right now, that amazingly, see what I did there, is the New York Mets. You like the Mets to win the NL East. They're plus 145 right now at the FanDuel Sportsbook. Mets have a new owner. They have some new players, specifically Francisco Lindor. And, well, their odds, they're just good enough for you to make a bet. How come, Jim? I think usually when we see high-profile offseason moves, we will overreact to them in the betting markets. You know, you see teams like the Reds pop up last year, and you'll see them, I think, get a bit overinflated. I think we're potentially underreacting, if that's a word, to what the Mets have done so far this year, because Lindor is one guy, but that's a really big move. It's a really big bat to get there, given what they were getting at that position last year. You put him into a lineup now, if you look one through seven or one through six or one through seven, that's a really good lineup, and it's going to be one of the best lineups in the league. So I think that that's enticing for sure, and we know the rotation is good, even though with Syndergaard not going to be there right away. They have enough depth there with the additions of guys like Joey Lacazy and stuff like that where they can get by until Syndergaard comes back. And once he does, if he can be anywhere near where he was previously, this team has a lot of upside. I made some crude, rudimentary power rankings for this year based on you know past production of players currently on each team. And that actually had the Mets ranked fifth in the power rankings and the tops in the NL East. The Braves have shorter odds to win the NL East. So I think that the Mets, we might just be underrating them uh, with the additions of Francisco Lindor and Carlos Carrasco. And I think we can buy them still at plus 145. The Mets, definitely a tough division. There are a lot of competitive teams in the NL East, and that does complicate things for sure. But I'm still okay with it. Plus 145 is a good number. This should be a good team, both with their starting pitching and with their offense. So why not buy in and see if those big offseason moves can really pay dividends? A lot of people are talking about the free agents the Mets didn't sign. Yes, they, they mentioned Francisco Lindor, but Carlos Carrasco is a huge addition to that rotation. James McCann will help behind the plate as well. The Mets at plus one of 45 does seem like a good number. And you're right, they do seem a bit underrated for the moves that they've made. And yes, the Braves are going to be awesome. And they have shorter odds, but the Mets, number five in Jim Sonis' power rankings, we're taking a shot on at plus 145. Let's move over to the NL Central, where you're all over the Brew Crew here at plus 380 over the Spandle Sp Sportsbook. Now, the Cardinals, certainly uh, the favorites in that division, but the Brewers, with that power bullpen and certainly power in the lineup as well, they're intriguing too. Yeah, I think they are. And we were talking about how the NL East has a lot of competitive teams. It's not an issue here. There are really no competitive teams outside of maybe the Cardinals, <laughs> but I think you know, we were talking about overreacting to moves. I think we're seeing that with the Cardinals here with the Nolan Arenado news, which makes sense. Like, he's tremendous. So, like, you know, if you're going to overreact to someone, might as well be him. He's going to make their defense and their pitching a lot better. But I still have concerns around the offense, still have concerns around their starting pitching. There are a lot of low-floor pitchers projected to be starters for that Cardinals team. So buying into the Brewers is as much about liking the Brewers as it is disliking the Cardinals. Now, the Brewers' offense... I don't think it'll be very good. They're going to be in a lot of low-scoring games this year, but what that does is it puts you in position to benefit from variance, and at plus 380, I'm okay doing that. That rotation is still good. The top end, Brandon Woodruff, Corbin Burns, those guys are rock stars. The other three guys are dependent on balls in play, and that can be scary, but... They added Colton Wong, and this is, I think, a move that we underreacted to because he improves their defense so much, and it's a team that does need good defense behind their bottom three starters inside that rotation. You add Colton Wong there, that improves the starting rotation, gives them a pretty good defense, and you, like you said, that bullpen is going to shut down some lights. So I think the Brewers have still some concerns in the offense, and again, I'm not expecting big things there, but the pitching, both in the starting rotation and the bullpen, should be good. The defense should be very good, too, and that's a lot of boxes to check. So I think the Brewers have some concerns, but I think the Cardinals are being overrated right now, and as a result, the Brewers are being underrated. So I think plus 380 is long enough where I can overlook the concerns of the Brewers and bet them to win the NL Central. Let's use that Cardinals overrated 
syndrome and, and bet on the Brewers here, who's just at a, a higher number than they probably should be. Yes, Nolan Arenado is amazing, but it's a long season. We'll see what the Cardinals ultimately do. I like Jack Flaherty a lot. But the Brewers have a lot of talent as well. Brandon Woodruff was awesome in that shortened season last year. The bullpen that we've both mentioned now uh, is really good. They can steal some games. We'll see what happens here. Uh, the Brewers certainly worth a shot in the NL Central. Finally, we move over to the AL, specifically the AL West. Right now, you can get the Astros at plus 150 to win the West. And again, we, we talk about overrating or underrating offseason moves. And I think that's the case here with the Astros, where a lot is made about what they have lost. But they're still really good. Yeah, they've lost a lot. And I think that seeing them at this number, it makes sense logically. I, ca I cannot fault FanDuel Sportsbook for putting them at plus 150 behind the A's to win the AL West. But you look at this division – not a lot of competitive teams, just like we talked about uh, with the NL Central. So they're not competing with a bunch of teams to try to win this division. It's basically them against the A's as far as the true top tier teams in this division, which puts you at a pretty good advantage if you're getting plus juice at plus 150 with this team. And yeah, they've lost a lot. But like you said, there's still some good players there. We could see Jose Altuve potentially bounce back at some point. Alex Bregman is still good. Carlos Correa seemingly back on the upswing again. Jordan Al Alvarez. Uh, we got Kyle Tucker hit hitting the ball really well so there's some upside in that lineup for sure and the rotation has question marks but I think that those question marks do contain upside if a lot of these guys wind up doing what they could potentially do and that's why I'm okay with taking a bit of a swing here the bullpen not too bad so I think at plus 150 you're getting a soft enough number on the Astros to be okay with the the legitimate losses they have had and they are legitimate losses like you look at the guys they've lost the past couple of off seasons it's fair to be concerned about this Astros team, but not a lot of competitive teams in the AL West. They are plus 150 to win. Still a really good offense. I think that is enough to potentially throw them out there, and they could all, always still make a move, try to bolster that rotation as well, add some depth to the to the lineup. So they might not be done. I think getting them plus 150 here is forgiving enough to be willing to dive into these waters and be okay with them, despite, like you said, being a team that has lost legitimately quite a bit of firepower the past couple of years. They've lost an absolute ton as we transition over from one era of, of Astros to the next with some of the players like Kyle Tucker and Jordan Alvarez, like you said. Uh, I think there just is value here in AL West. It just doesn't project to be very good. I think this this division is really a toss-up with the with the A's losing so much, uh, the Rangers still coming up, and the Mariners never making the playoffs. So I, I think that the Astros at plus 150, it, it's just a good number to get here uh, as spring training just gets underway. That's going to do it for us here on the FanDuel Hurry Up. Jim, I've enjoyed talking baseball, and I'm excited to do it for the next six months. Yeah, we got a lot of markets we can dive into, Greg, so I'm sure we'll be talking about something else next week. I have no idea what yet, but we'll talk to it, talk about it then, and it's fun to just uh, have some optimism about uh, warmer days on the horizon. But again, move to Florida. For Jim Sonnes, I am Greg Sussman. Tomorrow, we'll be joined by Tom Vecchio here to talk about the top DFS players on the NBA slate. Have a great night, and we'll see you back here tomorrow for another edition of the Fans Will Hurry Up.